Alright, so last time I explained every universal ban and clause I could find for Smogon and VGC, so this time I'm going to be explaining every single generation specific clause, so far, in Smogon and VGC. Actually, come to think of it, most of these are going to come from Smogon, as VGC doesn't really have much in the way of different clauses for the generations. Also, a huge thanks to just the user for giving me this idea. And as a side note, thank you so much for the wonderful comments you left on the last episode of the series. You all are such a positive community, and I really do appreciate all the positive comments. Alright, now with that out of the way, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, and let's get into it. Before we get into anything though, let's start by correcting a few things that I missed in the last episode. First off, Freeze Clause isn't exclusive to Generation 1, and is also present in Generations 2 and 4, though Gens 3 and 4 were more recent developments. I genuinely had no idea this at the time of writing that script, so my apologies, as I don't play those generations enough to know the metagame. Second, Swagger wasn't just banned because it made confusion hits deal more damage, it was also banned due to a very toxic combination called Swag Play, which added on the move Foul Play. Foul Play is a move that uses the target's attack and damage calculations, rather than the user's. Since Swagger boosted the target's attack, it meant that Foul Play dealt more damage on top of the opponent having to play around confusion. It just had too little answers to be competitive and was banned. To be clear, this is why Flatter wasn't banned, as Flatter boosts special attack, something that neither confusion hits nor Foul Play take into account. It also just isn't as widely distributed as Swagger, that's why it wasn't banned. Finally, I'd like to reiterate my statement on why bans and clauses exist in the first place. The only reason why clauses exist is to prevent strategies with zero counters. Generally, Smogon tries to keep as much strategies viable through these bans. For example, with my Oko Clause example, if Oko moves were unbanned and given to a Pokemon with no guard, that would be the majority, if not all, that you would see in that metagame, with very little counterplay to speak of. And that's a problem if you're trying to make a competitive game, as there's not a lot of creative expression in just spamming Oko moves over and over. I don't know, it just doesn't seem fun to play nor to watch. So we'll be explaining all generation specific clauses, starting with generation 1. Before that though, let me explain a broader clause that I missed in the last video, as it wasn't listed in the Universal Clauses list. That is the Cleric Clause. Cleric Clause states that all Pokemon must be at full HP and PP, and cannot have any status conditions prior to the battle. This may seem weird, as Pokemon Chodon doesn't have a way to give Pokemon less HP or PP, nor does it give a way for Pokemon to have status conditions at the start of battle. This really only applies to in-game competitions, and once in Generation 1 and 2 at that. The reason why this clause was implemented was because Generation 1 and 2 didn't automatically heal your Pokemon before a Link battle. I assume this clause was there for parity, as later generations implemented this heal before a Link battle, and it just made it more fair for everyone. Also, this clause was made so that you can't just prevent a Pokemon from being paralyzed or frozen by giving it another status ailment before battle, which can be hugely advantageous, especially in Generation 1 because Freeze, Sleep, and Paralysis are very impactful in the metagame in those games. Besides that, RPY also has three specific clauses. First off, the Invulnerability Clause, which bans the use of Flyer Dig. This is because of a unique glitch to RBY, where if a Pokemon loses their turn due to Paralysis while on the first turn of Flyer Dig, they enter a state where they cannot be damaged again until the Pokemon uses Flyer Dig again. This is just unfair for your opponent and can lead to a lot of uncompetitive situations, so Smogon decided to ban it. Then there's Tradeback Clause, where you cannot use Tradeback moves from GSC, or moves that Pokemon only have when transferred from GSC back to RBY. Now I think the reason why Tradebacks are banned is since RBY's meta has been unchanged for millions of years, no one has pushed to make Tradebacks a thing. While there is a separate metagame for Pokemon with these moves, it's not in standard competitive play due to a legacy of RBY-only Pokemon. Finally, there's a Decent Clause, which is only a thing because of the code of RBY. In simulators, this clause is done through a mod, preventing situations which would cause desyncs on consoles by causing moves to fail if they would cause desyncs. The reason for this clause is because a desync can cause errors and glitches inside consoles, which are not implemented into these simulators for hopefully obvious reasons. Rather than going through the effort of implementing intentional glitches into simulators, this clause is made to work around that issue. There are two specific clauses for Generation 2, and those are Sleep Trap and Trap Pass Clause. Both involve, well, trapping, specifically trapping moves like Mean Look. Sleep Trap bans the use of trapping moves and sleep-inducing moves on the same Pokemon. 
This means you can't have an Arya dose that knows both Spiderweb and Sea Powder, for example. Trap Pass bans the use of Trapping Moves and Baton Pass on the same Pokemon. The reason for this is because having a Trapping Move in either category of move led to some uncompetitive situations. As for Sleep, the main counter to having your Pokemon fall asleep is Switching Out and Sleep Talk, but if your Pokemon didn't have Sleep Talk, the only counter to Sleep was Switching Out. Trapping obviously prevented this counter start from being used. This clause prevents situations where your opponent could do absolutely nothing to stop you. Trap Pass was implemented for a similar reason. Since trapping moves didn't stop working when you switched out using Baton Pass, you could effectively trap a Pokemon that you knew you could counter with one of your other Pokemon waiting in the back and easily win those interactions. Now why is Pursuit allowed but not this similar level of trapping? Honestly, I don't know. If anyone who is more experienced in GSC than me can tell me in the comments, I'll pin it for everyone to see. But this is this one situation where I'm stumped. Gen 3 has two specific clauses, the one is just the same as the Endless Battle clause, expressed as a game timer. This is like VGC's implementation of the Endless Battle clause. The other one is the Baton Pass clause. Many other generations have some form of Baton Pass clause, and the reason for why has already been talked to death at this point, so I'll be brief. Baton Pass chaining leads to a lot of stupid strategies that let a lot of normally bad Pokemon thrive. While I'm all for giving bad Pokemon niches and competitive, no one appreciated Baton Pass chains. That doesn't mean the move itself is banned, as it's the only move in Generation 3 that allows for switches while maintaining momentum, like U-Turn and Volt Switch. The clause simply bans the chaining of multiple stat boosts with Baton Pass. Trap Pass clause is also in this generation, but is all under the Baton Pass clause name. The only notable clause that is different in Generation 4 is once again the Baton Pass clause. The only way it's different is that you're not allowed to use a Baton Pass at all with any boosting move or trapping move, meaning you're not allowed to pass a single stat boost, not even speed. You may only use Baton Pass to switch out your Pokemon. The only other thing that I could talk about is the banning of Quick Claw, and the only reason is that the usage of this item revolves around luck. I won't go too into depth about it because I'm planning on making a video on it and other similar banned items, but just rest assured that this item was banned due to it causing a lot of uncompetitive strategies. Generation 5 is kind of interesting as there are three specific clauses that are specific to this generation, and one of them is a modification on a previously universal clause, and that is Sleep Clause. In every other generation, you can't put more than one Pokemon to sleep at a time. However, in this generation, you cannot put any Pokemon to sleep at all. This is because Generation 5 kind of effed up with the sleep mechanics, as in this generation, when a Pokemon switched out, it reset its sleep counter. This essentially meant that you can't switch in a sleep Pokemon out, which was the main counter to sleep since no one in his generation ran sleep talk. Sleep kind of functioned like freeze back in generation 1 in a way, as both are essentially KOs, so Smogon had to ban sleep because there was no way to combat it. Another clause banned the use of weather inducing abilities in Pokemon with speed boosting abilities that activated it under certain weather conditions. Essentially, team combos like Drizzle and Swift Swim as well as Drought and Chlorophyll were banned. However, the abilities by themselves could be used. You could just go into a battle with only a Drizzle user or a Sifsim user. The clause only bans the use of them both in the same team. Why was this banned exactly? The best explanation that I can give is that since it was so easy to set up permanent weather, it would be equally easy to have a Pokemon that just always has double speed, making it difficult for other Pokemon without these speed boosting abilities to catch up. Basically, it would over centralize the meta, and that again isn't something that Snowgon nor the community as a whole would want, so ultimately the combination was banned. The abilities themselves are banned, however, because weather setting abilities are a huge part of what makes Generation 5 what it is competitively, and taking that away would remove a lot of creativity and generational identity. Whereas the speed boosting abilities weren't banned because without their respective weather, the Pokemon using them essentially had no ability. Plus, these abilities are great at playing off of the opponent's weather if they match the ability, giving the speed boosting abilities a role in the metagame. The final clause is the Gems Clause, banning the use of type boosting gems. Now this may be a surprise to some, as gems are used quite a bit in Generation 5 and are also kind of a key part in making up the generation's identity, as you can't get gems in any other generation. It wasn't introduced until Generation 5, and you cannot get any gem aside from the normal gem in future generations. So why were gems banned if they were essentially unique to Generation 5 and were a massive part of the identity of Gen 5 back in the day? The briefest explanation that I can give is gems created a lot of problematic sets that are just too much for the tier to handle. Now I say briefest because there is already a video by Freezeye explaining gems more in depth, so you should check that out if you'd like a more in-depth explanation. But in short, gems function kind of like Z-moves in Generation 7 in a generation that was just not prepared for Z-moves yet, and was swiftly banned. 
And that's all I can really talk about in terms of specific clauses for generations. Sure, there are a few things in terms of other banned moves, items, and abilities, though I'm going to be putting those off for future videos as the script is already long enough. There also aren't really any specific clauses named in the future generations, and they just simply ban certain things. I don't know, this is what I got when I searched up XY overuse and there was no specific clauses to be found, so... Eh. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and comment down below what you'd like to see next. If you have any questions, also be sure to comment down, down below and I'll answer them as best as I can. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.